Good night, fellow punters. The clock on the wall says 21.42. Yeah, the clock is up here. Someone was looking for the clock last night. I have a camera down here and a mirror to show me what's up on the clock. But uh, the wizard from, or the doctor from uh, Wales, pointed out that the clock on the wall is on the wall. I'm wearing my Breeders' Cup jacket. I don't think I've only wore it once since I had it on last year. Uh, bought it in 1994. The day uh, a young Italian man called Lanfranco di Torre won on Baratea in the mile. A wet day in Churchill Downs. It was for say, or it was, uh, they were looking for 750 quid or dollars on the way in. I bought it for 350 or 375 on the way out. We got, made a good few pounds that we went back to Frankie and we had a few winners. One of the better days. We had wheelbarrow, so we just dipped in and took a few quid out of the wheelbarrow on the way out, and we said thank you very much. The warmest jacket I ever had is nearly too heavy to be wearing. I'd be sweating before the end of it. I might have to get rid of it. But I always put it on for the Breeders' Cup. Uh, if I go out on Saturday night, I'll be wearing it. Well, it depends where I go. Uh, there used to be a pub a few years ago that we used to go to, uh, and they used to take bets. But... Uh, I don't know how to do it anymore. We'll see. We might go. We'll have to go somewhere. Uh, don't know real damage today. We had uh, two places. Uh, Destuville was off first. Uh, ran well. Uh, didn't get him into the race quick enough. Probably needs a step up and trip. That was over two miles. Probably two and a quarter at least. And uh, Mativa was gambled on. That opened up 12 to 1. Uh, the handbrake was off. Uh, it needs a fence, definitely. It, uh, it was very uh, big over a lot of the hurls. Uh, but uh, anyone that backed it at 10s or even 8s, he made a profit to co uh, to be able to uh, pay for the loss on Dragon Ball Prince. Uh, tried to make it a test of stamina and uh, done no good. Uh, anyway, we have a few for tomorrow. Weather be I see there's a 7 a.m. Uh, inspection. When you see a 7 a.m. inspection, it's unlikely that it'll go ahead. Uh, I I didn't give much attention to that today. I seen uh, famous bridges out tomorrow. Probably would need a bit further though, so I didn't go into it in depth uh, to see. Uh... But anyway, let's go with the Glen Abbey show, as the program used to say years ago. We're going to. I'm going to tilt this a bit now. <coughs> uh, Go to Newmarket first. It's heavy going there tomorrow. Uh, there's an each way play there. They're paying uh, four plays. And I see 365 is paying five. And they've Toshizu. Uh, that goes best in heavy ground. Uh, tipped it once before. Uh, I think at the time it was third behind Bob Pedro uh, at the start of the year. It was placed anyway, we got money out of it. But it used to be with Joseph O'Brien in Ireland. And if you look at its previous forum, uh, its best runs was on heavy ground. Um, where did I see the heavy ground? First run for the New Yard, it was a tenth in the, uh, in the Lincoln behind migration at 50 to 1. It's only beaten seven lengths. That was off 94. And it's down uh, 88. It went up two pounds for its run uh, over and heavy ground as well uh, behind balance play. And it stayed on really well to the line. That's not it. That is River Tiber, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I'm at the end of this. That's it coming in about in the whitish colours. Uh, coming to the furlong pole, still Millibos, but now balance play coming through nearest to us to try and challenge. Certainly that is still there. A little bit shorter room behind those was Totnes, but balance play is surging clear as they race towards the line. Must have seen, might get placed money, but it is balance play who wins to Totnes. To Finished third there. I was looking for someone that we'd, we'd uh, not lose money on in the race. There's a couple of doubts about a few of the others around it. Um, in the 310, 
as well tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Allen, he ran in this last year. No, he he loves this time of the year on heavy ground. Uh, but Torcello loves New Market. Now it hasn't ran for a while, but uh, and it's a nine-year-old. But it loves New Market and it loves heavy ground. Uh, last year it was uh, behind HMS President. Uh, first run there in the wild then to run. Uh, um, that was behind in the, what do you call it? Anyway, it likes heavy ground, it likes New America. There were two two players I was trying to get. To be the TNT double. Uh, Mr. Allen uh, won the last day. He went up three pounds. He, he was, uh, was Mr. Allen, there was, wasn't it last year? There was behind Messi, was it? was he had won in Nottingham and he won the same race in Nottingham this year and then he went on to uh, behind uh, Metier. Uh, likes heavy ground as well but he's he's carrying a big weight uh, I was just trying to get something that would be early in the day tomorrow uh, if there was nothing uh, on uh, in Weatherby uh, fast last is off as well we go to Fundock long time followers will know where I'm going. We're going to Samrog. One, two or three times far as then. It's rated 54 now. It's one off 50, 61. And then the letter do down again in the handicap. Nice and KJ And the one off 53 in Cork last year. And then the one in... in uh, Bellistown. Now they went the same route this year for the same two races. They were very unlucky that it, he was drawn wide or she was drawn wide and uh, that it rained that day in uh, Cork because they were uh, the same mark as the uh, previous year and then he was left or she was left at the start in uh, Laytown. It was a big plunge on her that day but off 11 to 8 favourite. It is well handicapped. Uh, it's drawn a bit better this year than three Ideally, five and a half furrows it is, but it needs to get out of the traps. Uh, Maggie Thunder is the pace setter there. She'll get a good toe into the race. Uh, she was seven to two earlier. Seven to two, under to 30. Wind bet. There's a good bit of money for that meter there, but it hasn't run in a year uh, to switch yards. Uh, but we're going that road. The different colours, but. They're sort of the same ownership on what harem. Now, this is won six times in Dundalk. Uh, we were on Derek Desert Highway the last day, but it, it's gone up. Uh, he won for us 20 to 1 last year, but he, the, the handicapper put him up £10 for winning the last day. And that Rockbury lad didn't win when it ran the other day. Wednesday it ran. Uh, the tin pound might stop it. What harem is a better horse and has ran very well late now? Was a better horse. It's an eight year old now, but that in his prime that was raised in ninety six. It's uh it's sixty five on the on the turf, uh on the uh, grass and it's still seventy six, but it ran very well a few times there. Second in Fairy House, third in Gordon, and third in. Uh, uh, the car of the last day on ground that would have been totally against it so it it's maintaining its form even though it's eight uh it's an each way bet there at seven to one with three six five for sure they're paying four places uh there's a harsh here as well done us a good turn a couple of runs back uh luke short 12 to one the reason is he ran since, but the going would have been totally against him. And it won well enough that day. At 6 to 1. I tipped it up at 8 to 1. Just the last race that night. Uh, 
The handicapper put him up uh, eight pound. But there he is on the right hand side. Jesse won cozy enough that day. Short and John Alexander, then Cardine, who's followed by Hidden Land, Cold Steel, it's all good man. Next is Autocrat with God knows and Bambino, but gone for home is Luke Short and Robert Weirty, lengthening their lead from Cadine, who's moved off in pursuit, then it's all good man, and on the run up towards the finish, it is Luke Short winning within touching distance. That's two for Robert Weirty, Cadine second, third is Loyalty Bess. Staying back to the scene of the crime, um, it's twelve to one. It, it's a, uh, it's a good enough price. They're paying four places there. Like, uh, eight pound is a good hike. But uh, the the uh, the horse there that hasn't ran in a long time uh, for uh, Cole Moore, uh, King uh, Leo de Grants, uh, probably classy enough, uh, by Camelot. First time in a handicap. But I, I put in that as a loyalty bet. And there's a horse I was looking for waiting to, uh, to go a mile. Uh, but it's going seven furnace more even as that code breaker. I prefer this to be a mile, but why they're persistent in it, they must think that seven furlongs will do. That's at Newcastle. Uh, a few good runs. He closes as well, and he's drawn. He's drawn high tomorrow as well, which is good. But uh, I thought uh, to the good run, the last day behind that uh, Kalganov uh, that we were on, uh, it ran on very well. Uh, I prefer it to the mile. Uh, but that's the cards were dealt. Well, we'll see what price is it. If there's an each way price, back it. Five to one there, eleven to two in places, uh, nine to two, paying four places, a few of them there, each way about. Which brings us to Santa Anita. We we'll better start at the first race, which is nine o'clock. This is the two year old the sprint, five furlongs. We have five Irish runners and we have two English runners this year. And the uh, sixteen runners of this there has been five English winners. Three has been won by Charlie Appleby and uh, two by Johnny G. And there's been five Irish winners, all trained by Aidan O'Brien, and he won last year's uh, running with Victoria Road. Big Eves is the favourite. It won the Flying Childers. Fairly decent time as well, 59.8. And ran in the Nunthorpe. That was against the older horses, but I wouldn't worry about that uh, till down the field. Crimson Advocate won the Queen Mary. Decent time as well. And uh, it beat Brief Raleigh, who has won since. Uh, if we look at... Uh, The draw is crucial here. You either you either you're out or you're not. Uh, Big Eves is drawn in four. Good draw for it, but it there's a turn coming up. Uh, now I heard that it has been uh, training in uh, in uh, Southall, but that's like training at a football match. It's not not the same as going out and being match ready for the day. If you look at this horse's speed, uh, Crimson Advocate, uh, when it won in Gulfstream, before it went to Royal Ascot. This was over at, round the turn, which is five furlongs. 21 and 
four for the opening quarter. They're at the top of the stretch. It's Crimson Advocate in front. Ocean Mermaid is second. These two working clear of the others. Kiss at the rail. The myth down the center. Final eighth of a mile. Crimson Advocate still finding here. Edwin Gonzalez for George Weaver. Here's a stake sweep for George Weaver. Here's Crimson Advocate in front. O then it went over to, uh, to Newcastle. Or not to Newcastle, to Ascot. What are you on about? Got a great start that day. Well. Some crimson advocate in the red, white, and blue. The near side, a beautiful diamond moves through in the second position. Behind this rebel rally, got to love a gray and juniper berries over on the far side. The dark blue of Flora of Bermuda's up there, but near side it continues to be Crimson Advocate with a clear advantage. But here is Relief Rally and Tom Marcon coming towards the line is very tight. Crimson Advocate and Relief Rally behind those. Of Relief rally. Did I say a brief rally? I had a few of the letters right. Um, that hasn't ran since. It was it kept for tomorrow. Uh, that's the horse I'm going with. Uh, and what I'm going to do in each race is so, some people, the fact that. Uh, there's a couple of favourites that I'll be picking over the few days and people are saying, uh, but there's, I'll be picking an outsider in each race uh, and I'll suggest uh, an, an each way lucky 15 for small money. But uh, over the track, Slider, now he, he, he's, he, was, he was drawn on the inside the last week, he got a good break. He's drawn on the outside tomorrow. It'll all depend on the break as well. And he didn't ride the turn or run the turn, or ride it, whichever Top way you want it. That's him. The rail on the inside is but he finished well. To take the lead away from Slider. Slider blew the turn, but is coming back for more. Four lengths back, April Vintage and Bear River, a 16th to go. Slider and Dark Vintage to the wire. Slider is just too strong. And Slider cruises home in the end to win it by two. Dark Vintage. If he did get a good break tomorrow, uh... I got a bit of cover if he was fourth or fifth even. He has the toe coming up the straight. Give me the beat boys has ran in uh, uh, group one races there as well. Uh, ran in the national stakes. Uh, I would have a chance as well. But there is what I went with. That uh, slider was uh, 12 to 1 with the, 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 the green bouquet. Crimson Advocate is four to one all over the place is the selection the next race is the juvenile fillies where do we get the field here there are some of them wonder wheel uh won it last year uh Joel Orazio has, has uh, won four of the last five or three of the last, but he's not, he's no right to this tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, that is number seven in trap seven. That's out of Beholder, who won this race in 2012, then it won the distaff in 2013, and it won the distaff again in 2016. Uh, She's very much like her mother. Um, that just FYI, uh, that won the. Uh, where am I here? I won the Frisette. Uh, uh, that's always a good try on the East Coast. And Tamara, this is a this is a this looks to be a good joke. It's eleven to ten with William Hill. Uh, it looks to be a lump job. Where does he this baby fly? Red comes out of the pack. 
back now to make a race of it on the outside and behind that a Chatella. They're at the top of the lane now and it's still Tamara in front and going along comfortably by three. Been chased gamely by Laurent on the outside. But just look at this girl go. Tamara and Mike Smith could not have been more impressive. They won it impressively. A big seven, eight lengths in the end. Laurent was second then. She's only in second gear there. Um, it's four to five and it could go off um, a bit shorter in... Uh, in the states uh, I think she's a good thing uh, just FYI that's uh, that one the frisette for Billy Moss Irish Maxima is in between horses now as Life Talk rallies down at the rail. Emery is in fourth. Here's just FYI. Here's Life Talk. They're one two now. Followed by Emery, Irish Maxima, Central Avenue putting in a late run. But just FYI kicks clear now. Just FYI. On to victory here in the 76th running of the Grade One Frisette. Just FYI. That'll be each way selection in that race. It's uh, ten to one with the green bouquet. On to the next one. Twenty past ten. The juvenile fillies turf. It was won last year by Mediate, uh, trained by Aidan O'Brien. Now, that was only the second uh, in European winner of that in 16 runners of this race. Uh, Charlie Hills won it in uh, 2013 with uh, Chris Elliam. Uh, Carlos Way is the favourite uh, for uh, Simon Crisford. I see the trainer, they must be allowed uh, to put down a dual uh, trainership over there because he's on his own and I think Johnny G is the same that is having the sun down Carlos uh, Way uh, he won the Rockefeller in uh, Newmarket um, there's an outsider here to the big price last night uh, Gala Brand this beat the boys this is my each way selection in this, isn't it? Yeah. She beat the boys in Saratoga. Thanks behind and last three quarters in one minute, 16. And two fifth seconds, Market Street hugs the rail, gets spooled up alongside in second. In the center of the course, the filly is underway. Galabran starting to close, as is Carson's Run, just inside of her. Carson's Run, Galabran, these two head and head for the wire. Galabran on the outside, or Carson's Run. Carson's Run, Galabran, nose and nose. Galabran asserts herself and beats the boys in the with anticipation. Now she ran since then, but uh, it was a very slow. Uh, very slow fractions that finished fourth in the Miss Grillo. She got, she's at the back again, but the, the, it was a very slow pace. Uh, she runs on to finish fourth, but she was in first gear. To justify on the outside That's her last. second. Whimsically is next in third. Gold Lightning down towards the rail is running in a fourth. And uh, then comes uh, Life's an Audible, who will swing to the outside for the stretch run. Here is Whimsically. Here is Hard to Justify. The two of them are right together. Life's an Audible continues to gain on the outside. It is Hard to Justify who has the lead. Then Whimsically. Then Life's an Audible. They come on for the finish. Hard to Justify has won it. Three quarters of a length. Life's an Audible finished second. And Whimsically was third. She flew. She had no place to go on the turn. She was a bigger price last night. Um, I think she was 33s or 40s. Uh,
but my selection in the race is she feels pretty. I was impressed by this horse, the way it, the turn of foot, uh, because and to that a mile. Uh, some of them horses have only ran at six furlongs, but I prefer to see them. To be honest about will this day, I prefer to know that the will stay before I put it on. In front, Golden Canary, simply in front, challenging Azara coming with now, flying, she feels pretty, she feels pretty on the outside, has gone right on by, takes over from simply in front, and she feels pretty in the lead, simply in front in second, and then came Azara, Golden Canary, but she feels pretty careering away in the Johnny Wagon at mistake, she feels more than pretty, she feels fantastic, and she wins by three and a half lengths to simply in front. Johnny V went up for the ride as well, um, and he didn't ride her first time out. Um, I was impressed by the turn of foot, and she is drawn wide, but I don't mind that. Uh, I went through all the videos of it, and that I'm just going about to see with my own two eyes. So there's the two in that race. We have two more to go. I'll hurry it up as fast as I can. This is the eleven o'clock. Two year olds. It was won by Forte last year for Todd Pletcher. Uh, Timberlake won the. Well, we get down on the page. I forgot to do that. Timberlake won the Champagne Stakes, the Grade One in New York, and he won it in a good time as well, one thirty-five, uh, for Brad Cox. Now to the sloppy track that day. Uh, Boots is two for two at the track. It is beaten by stable companion uh, uh, and a second run, but that was in Delmare. Uh, if we look at there's there's unra outrageous speed in this altogether. Uh, Prince of Monaco. Bob Baffert has three in this. But he bet Mouth, uh, which is over six furlongs to then Delmer. Look at it here. Yes, pal, Mouth in the red cap, Prince of Monaco up alongside. This is a Bob Baffert race. They definitely going to run one, two, but which way round? On the outside, Prince of Monaco gets the advantage, and Prince of Monaco's too good for Mouth. Prince of Monaco, perfectly handled by Flavian Prot, an impressive winner of the best, pal. Prince of Monaco, Muth was second. Muth was second. But Muth turned it around the forum, I thought. Uh, when he got back to home turf. Over course and distance. Side of wind me up, wind me up, and Muth square off at the eighth pole. They're head and head. Muth puts his head in front. Wind me up, trying hard. Four back to be you in third. A sixteenth to go. His name is Muth, and he's coming to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile in fine style. Rolling home by four over what? Muth. Does he want to belt to a dishcloth badly? But he's a selection in the race. Now, if you look at Locked. But, but Todd Pletcher has only one winner out of 34 in the last uh, 14 days. The yard, I prefer I, I, I prefer to see it. There's a lot of other yards on fire. But the horse that was second in this, I think has a great each way chance in it. Quarter mile to go. The wine steward with Locked moving up on the outside and Northern Flame in between that pair. Top of the short stretch. Here is Locked. Locked racing by on the outside for the lead. The wine steward is responding to the inside. Generous Tipper goes to third. The wine steward responding to the challenge so far. Here's Locked right alongside. Locked. The wine steward. It is Locked to win the Claiborne Breeders Futurity for Jose. What happened there? Uh, 
the wine steward. I don't know what happened there. Um, but if you look at the prices, the wine steward is 14 to 1 and locked is 3 to 1. So the selection of that is moved. You could back that each way, it's 9 to 2. Uh, Timberlake is not bad harsh either, but uh, we're going with Mooth and the each way selection is the wine steward. On to the last one, which is the juvenile turf, a mile, 14 declared. It's won by Victoria Road last year. 16 runners. Aidan O'Brien has uh, won it five times. Charlie Appleby has won it uh, three times. And John Gosden has won it twice. And has, out of 16 runners, has been uh, 10 times in uh, Europe. Uh, River Tiber is the favourite. and a lot of money for it. It's into 7 to 4 with the green bookie there from 7 to 2 yesterday. Uh, he, Ryan Moore Road, unquestionable in uh, France when it was second to. Uh, Rosalian, wasn't it? But he switches on to uh, River Tiber. I think this is the first time uh, that unquestionably ran over seven furlongs that time. River Tiber hasn't. It's the first O'Brien harsh, I think, in about 25 harshes that he sent over for a mile race that hadn't ran over beyond six furlongs. All the others had. But the reason is the couple of better ones in the yard, uh, which is a a bit of a no-no. Or not a no-no, but a, a doubt, sort of. Uh, there's two outsiders. Uh, I've went mental here. I've picked a 50 to 1 shot. I've picked TikTok. Johnny V again. Drawn in trap three. Coming out of trap three. Top talk, not tick talk, top talk. But Motion has had four Breeders' Cup winners, and two of them are at this track, and he did 40 to 1 place last year. Uh, if we look at this, I know it is only a, a, a small stakes race, but uh, in Colonial Downs. Triple Espresso is last. The first time starter Triple Espresso last geared toward the outside as they turn to the top of the stretch. Determined sail and arrow leader. Tok Tok trying to get out from second. Down the outside mainstream still out. Randazzo's made up some ground toward the inside. Manabi's starting to roll from the back but as well. Why Triple Espresso's starting to run on as well. But a long way to come. Tok Tok goes to a narrow advantage. Determined sail. Randazzo. Triple Espresso continues to uncoil down the center. Tok Tok still there. Determined sail. Triple Espresso down the outside. Tok Tok got the jump though. Tok Tok won it. Now oh, the next time he ran, Johnny V took over, and Can Can won it, and Can Can is a ten to one shot, and he's fifty to one. But watch him on the rail with the white hat. Can't get a run. from fourth quarter mile to go noted in behind horses and then nomos who has to go out with coin miner toward the center of the course noted will join them on the outside gorilla trek trying to run from last in the center of the course up front though it is double your money with a narrow lead double your money first world war vote no noted is coming late here is noted here is can group noted can group at the wire head bobbing photo for the win in the Catholic if he was on the outside, or if he got a run up the inside, he'd have won that race. Uh, there's another horse here, Air Recruit, 40 to 1. And that's my two selections in that race. And if I had them replaced, I should have more money than if I backed a, a 7 to 4 shot now. This, I thought, was impressive enough the last time. Uh it got the lead and it's, in, it's drawn in trap one. 
So it could get in behind the face. On the outside as they turn for home, three stacked across the track. A recruit on the outside. Wine collector in that battle. Tropen Higgins backed off in third. It's a gap of some seven lengths back. And Blue Creek is trying to pick up late, late on the far outside with a furlong left to run. A recruit. A recruit has the stamina and is going away in the Laurel Futurity. A recruit by five, by six. It's a recruit. Going to be closer second. They're drawn on the inside, the two of them. They're in one and three. Now, it's a very open race, but uh, if, if uh, as the betting suggests, O'Brien has his own five times out of 16 stars, the first and second. But the rest in it's it's, uh, it's pretty open. So I was trying to pick something that I had caught me eye and They're forty to one and fifty to one. Uh, but if one of them got placed, I don't know. I, I mean, I'd written down the first a uh, couple of days ago, uh, River Tiber, but to the seven to two shot. But I'm, I'm not tipping up a horse at seven to four uh, when the when the money is on already. So I was trying to get something that might run into a place. They're paying four places on that. So. To, time now to harsh into Saturday. I've some of it done already. And bash the bookies over and.